Hi. Due to all the cold weather, snow, power outages, everything that's going on right now, I've already shown you in the last video I posted how to make a heater with candles. It's the simplest, easiest way you can do that. But, what about cooking? Now, I'm going to show you the easiest way to use candles to cook with. Now, most people will already have some of this stuff. If you don't, don't worry about it. It can be substituted. Um, to be able to cook, you basically need a stove with a rack and a way to lift that rack up. Now, I am using clothespins. You can use small pieces of wood, um, you know, whatever you can find. As long as the pot is high enough over the candles that it doesn't suffocate the candles. You need a plate, your oven rack, and something to hold the rack up. I am using clothespins. I have four cups of water in this pan. So we're going to see, I put it on about five minutes ago while I was setting up my camera. So we're going to see how long it actually works for. Now suppose you don't have an oven. I'm going to show you a couple ways to make a pretty useful little candle stove using some tin cans. First, I'm going to go with a large can. Most people do not have these cans laying around. This is a large coffee can. And I took some notches out of it so there could get plenty of air. And I just put some simple holes on the top. Now, I already have a video of me demonstrating this. Unfortunately, I did use my small camcorder, so the quality is not that good. I'm not going to upload that because the quality absolutely stinks. Um, and this does take quite a while, the way this is made. But it will help you in a situation. I will also show you another stove that I built out of a can. Now the reason I did this this way is because I have this can. Now I can actually put the candles underneath, set this on top, and I can actually heat stuff up in this. I have set a pan on top. It does work. It just takes a long time. If you want it to work quicker, put more holes in the top so more heat can get out. But I designed this, eh, wax, I designed this just to work with this little can. And so it sits right on top. Um, I may end up uploading the other video. But uh, right now I want to talk about an easier way. You don't have to have this. You don't have to have this. But honestly, if you have one of these. Now this can is from uh, Walmart Chicken. Walmart Chicken Breast. That you can buy. And this is a coffee can. Most coffee cans now are that cardboard or they're plastic. You have to have a metal can if you got to build one of these. You can fit nine um, candles under here and they'll stay lit and put out plenty of heat. But once again, this cooks kind of slow because it has to fill the heat up in this entire thing. But I have actually got water to boil it just took about an hour and that was only one cup so think about that if you're building something like this it is going to take a while but if you have no other options then that's what you do here again is another Walmart chicken can and what I did here is I put holes all the way around that way the candles would stay lit I also put small holes all the way around the top and some larger holes you can make these uh, quarter inch or 
the drill bit I'm using is 11 32nd or something like that I, I would have to have actually have to look but uh, the holes it doesn't matter as long as it gets enough air now only three candles will fit in this but the candles are much closer if you're having to use something like this and it, this actually will get water to the boiling point and it does take quite a while once again that's only one cup but something like this you could actually use to heat up food with um, ravioli you could heat water up enough to make like ramen noodles things like that so in a situation hopefully you're not one of those without power or if your neighbors without power or whatever and you do and you see this video and they need a way to cook here's a couple examples of how you can do it now this is all using candle power the candles I'm using are just these cheap Walmart tea lights this is like four dollars for a hundred I've already done a few experiments with them um, like the heating experiment which I came up with a way for you to use these get to get an extreme amount of heat out very quickly that is in the last video I uploaded that most people have those items with the exception of these candles in their home uh, all you needed for that was a plate and some aluminum foil and the candles now I don't know if you can see this there is like a steam starting to come off of the pan now this is four cups of water it's only been in there 10 12 15 minutes something like that not very long and I can already see little bubbles forming that's definitely getting hot definitely hot hot so that's four cups of water most people that demonstrate stuff demonstrate it with two cups that is not two cups that is absolutely four cups of water I will show you the pan hopefully it will start boiling within a few more minutes but if you have to find a way to cook can you cook with candles that's one of the questions you need to understand yes the thing is you have to have enough candles to cook with now candles only produce about 100 BTUs on the high end usually they're a little bit less than that so depending how many candles you have going will determine how much heat you have going I don't know if you can see the steam but I wanted to talk about this if you're in a situation especially now where you have extremely cold weather in some places power outages in an emergency if you can get your hands on even these cheap tea light candles um, a hundred pack of my local Walmart was like four dollars and some change I believe so it was under five dollars for a hundred now these candles turn basically to wax liquefied wax but if you want to keep using them Here's what I suggest you do because I'm going to show you some. Uh, here are the candles that I've already used. Now you can see the wax re-solidifies. But the problem is the wicks. So if you can get yourself some type of wick or something to replace the wick with. And once this is... Um, a liquid you put your new wick in there and then you let it re-solidify these can be used over and over and over and over again those are all the candles that I used 
for my heater experiment where I made the heater that puts out a great deal of heat and it did put out a huge amount of heat for being little bitty candles. Now what I want to do is I want to let this go. I don't want to make this video too long but I want you to see what these can actually produce as far as cooking or basically just using it. Um, if you want to make a small stove for three candles uh, while that's going, take your can, make sure your can is big enough for three candles. Like I said, this is a can that holds the uh, chicken breast from Walmart. And put plenty of air holes in it, lower down, middle to lower, middle to lower, middle to lower. Because you want that candle to get air, but you want the heat of the candle to build up in here. And then I have small holes here, and then some larger holes here. This was pretty simple to make, but if you don't have a drill, and you don't have a drill bit, and you're stuck at home, with absolutely no electricity, no way to drill into a can. Can you punch through the can with a nail, a screw, using a screwdriver to wind out the holes? Absolutely, but that's a lot of hassle and you're gonna be lucky if you don't you know, get yourself. This is the easiest, simplest way to create a cook stove using candles just using a regular oven rack and something to make for legs now remember if your candles are going out you need to raise that rack a little bit more it's not getting enough air do not bunch your candles together in one pile they need to be spread out so you can get plenty of air for each candle Oops, uh, spilling my water there. Uh, I was trying to show you the bottom. Unfortunately, I can't because I'll spill water everywhere. Um, this is actually little bubbles are forming in the bottom. Now, like I said, the reason I'm doing this is because people are without electricity, they're without water, they're without a way to cook. And a lot of people are running out and buying candles. Now, I don't recommend the super cheap tea light candles, but if that's all you can find, and that's what I purchased, was these little bitty junk tea light candles. They're really small. And I paid, like I said, around $4 and $4 some change, something like that, for a hundred of these things. Now, they don't last very long. But the thing about these candles is, once they're melted down, you set them aside and they will re-solidify. The one problem you're going to have is the wick. Once the wick burns out, all that wax is going to be useless. But once again, this is four cups of water getting heated by nothing but candles. And you're going, okay, how do I keep the wax from going everywhere? Well, basically the same way I did the heater. If you haven't watched that video, watch my last video on the candle heater and the best, cheapest DIY heater you can make watch that and you will see the candles can produce quite a bit of heat and that includes with cooking now if I had something like soup or chili or something like that I could stand there and I could cook that and heat it up now I would not attempt to fry a steak using candle power I mean I guess it may be possible but I don't have any steak, we can't afford steak, so that's not something I can try. 
But making something to eat, mashed potatoes, heating water for mashed potatoes, um, cooking vegetables in, in, out of a can or frozen vegetables, some, things like that. Probably even macaroni and cheese. If you're going to make something like macaroni and cheese, try to use more candles and a larger pot. So you want as much heat as you can get. Now remember, this is only four cups of water. But if you think about this, four cups of water is steaming off of nothing but some candles. Now I would show you the rack real quick. I, I really wish I could show you the water, but it, once I lift this camera up, it's going to be a mess. Um, it's, it's on the other side of the room here. But it is definitely, definitely having bubbles in the bottom. In fact, the bubbles are all the way around. Um, you know what? Uh, you're going to have to forgive me. I'm fixing to move the camera. Then I have to try to reposition that, okay? Uh, sorry about that. Let me get this straightened up again. I apologize for any noise or anything. Now you can see the water. You can see the bu the bubbles in the water. That is strictly off candle power. Now. I haven't counted the candles. I don't know how many I have there. I have quite a bit. That's putting out a huge amount of heat. I believe there's like 10 maybe there. I would have to count them. But if you have to cook for an emergency and you have candles, and it doesn't matter if it's these tea light candles or something else, if you have an oven, with a rack. It doesn't matter if it's a small oven, an RV oven, um, a barbecue pit with a grill. That can be set up and you can actually have candles underneath it and use that rack for your your pot. <coughs> now I already know that's really super hot, so I'm not going to stick my finger back in it. In fact, I'm going to get some coffee, and I'm just going to let this record for a few minutes here, and uh, you can see what it's doing. I hope you can see the steam coming off the top, but I'm going to grab me some coffee. up here like I said the reason I'm making this is there are so many people out there right now without power without electricity even if you're lucky enough to have water in some cases you may have to boil that water or you may have to get that water hot you may have to have a way to cook if you can get your hands on candles now it doesn't matter if they're this type taller candles now I wouldn't get uh, the skinny tall candles, I mean, you could. You would just have to raise your rack up that high. If you're going to do something like that, raise it up. I suggest you use like 2x4s and make some kind of frame for it for the candles to fit underneath. If you don't have what I have, you can always find something to go into the rack. See, this rack's not going to get very hot.
that rack is barely warm and that's pretty much closer to the front than the, the back on the rack so if you're going to make something like this whatever you need to make your legs out of that's what you make them out of now remember if you're going to set this on your stove it depends on your burners our burners are crooked they don't set flush so I had to adjust this so the pan would be more or less flush and I did that basically which is clothes pins I don't know if you can see the clothes pins on the front I believe you can yeah so the legs I made for this one are made out of just clothes pins oh that's definitely got bubbles in there a lot of them so for an emergency stove You can take a can, big can, notch it out, put some holes in it, put a bunch of candles under it, and that's your emergency stove. Unfortunately, you need a great deal of candles for this, and most people do not have something this big. I mean, this, this is like a one gallon or something like that. For a small emergency stove, using candles only three candles fit in here it will make water very 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 hot it just takes a very very long time because there's only three candles and that's basically 300 BTUs of heat and that's all but make sure if you use one of these make one of these plenty of air holes and you can see metal sticking out here maybe so you have to be careful when using one of these and smaller holes at the top all the way around and some larger holes here that way the heat comes out here and the pan or whatever sits directly on the top and seals these holes off and heat and air come out here but that will let more heat come out right there in the middle like I said if you don't have any type of cans or if you don't have a drill bit or a drill but you have a stove you have a barbecue pit you have a glass plate alright that's a must you have to have something up underneath these candles in case the wax spills you don't want it all over your stove you want it contained now that's definitely definitely hot enough that I can make like ramen noodles hot chocolate the longer I leave it on there the hotter that's going to get and since I know the other stoves will bring water to a boil they just do take quite a long time for that this should too with the amount of candles I have under here you saw the bubbles so it's already trying to boil you see the steam so in an emergency situation where you have to purify water you can do it this way in a situation where you have to cook now like I said I don't know what would happen with a raw steak I have no clue I do know that if I put a lid on that it would go a lot quicker because it would keep the heat in so if you're gonna try to cook raw meat this way put a lid on it and it keeps some of that heat in but I want to talk to you about stoves emergency stoves um, I will show you the or count the candles maybe I, I, I might move the camera again and show you See if I can get that right again. All right, let me dump this out. Oh, definitely steam. A lot of steam. 
Okay, let me adjust this again. Uh, uh, my camera's on a box, so it's a little bit crooked. And with the light on, it it doesn't show up very well. If my camera gets out of focus, I apologize. No, I don't need that. Yeah, just put one of my candles out. All right. Here is how I have my legs. Now, this rack is exactly like it comes out of the stove, the oven. I have one here, down, on the outside, and then just one here. That way I can slide up and down, and this just flips up underneath that one, and that one holds it in place. Now to adjust this for your stove, you can just move that up or down. Let's see if I can get that. And that's how you adjust your legs. Like I said, if you don't have something like this, clothespins, then whew, candily. Uh, if you don't have clothespins, use something else up underneath there. That rack does not get hot on the outside. So it doesn't matter if you have to stack uh, plastic lids, uh, aluminum foil, whatever you have to do. Now, if I would have been smart, I would have taken all the burners off because our burners are like crooked. They don't set flush. But I could have taken the burners off and just used something up underneath here. Now it only has to be about an inch, inch and a half above the candles. So adjust that as you need it. Like I said, if your candles are going out, then it's too close to the candles. But you also don't want it three inches away from the flame either. Three, four inches, that's, that's too far away. A lot of the heat will escape. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I have eleven candles there. So eleven candles is enough to get your water going. Heat water. If I left it on there longer, it would have boiled the water. You can heat food up. You can cook. Once again, I don't have raw steak. We can't afford steak. So it's not like I could try to cook. But if you're willing to do that and try this, then make a video or, or a comment and let people know how it went. This is for an emergency situation, emergency stove, basically with nothing but candles, stuff you already have at home. Um, in fact, you could use car sockets out of a socket set and put them under here and put like a nut and bolt through it or tie it on there, whatever. You have to just to get that raised up. Um, pieces of 2x4, whatever you need to put under there to get that high enough to where the candles won't go out, but it'll also get enough heat to your pan. Now, I can't turn this too much because the wax will go everywhere. Sorry about the movement. Now, if you don't have a stove or oven to pull the rack out of, 
you can use something out of a barbecue pit. Um, if you have to, you can make something just to set your pot on. That's entirely up to you. But this is the simplest, easiest way to cook with your candles. Now, I did this once again because I already made a video on a candle heater that put out a huge amount of heat. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but the candles are spaced apart, probably a quarter inch away from each other, maybe a little bit more on some candles, so Eric could get in there and keep all the candles lit. Now, these candles... Like I said, they're not that expensive, but your problem is going to be the wicks. I already showed you the candles I used for my heater, and you can see a lot of the wicks were just burnt down to nothing. Now, you can tell right now, what I just showed you is nothing but liquid. If you could put something in there right now to replace that wick with, now would be the time to do it and now would actually help you know that way your wicks may be burnt up a lot of it and replace it and you have like a brand new candle when you need it these are reusable once they reharden then you can reuse them so don't dump the wax out don't throw them away all right i hope you can see everything um, this just shows you if you need emergency heat for a stove for emergency cooking you can use candles once again these are cheap tea light candles if you want me to upload the other video I made showing the other two the, the two can stoves that's fine let me know but it is a really bad quality because I recorded that with my other handheld, my low handheld camera. But I've showed you the easiest, simplest way for you to use candles for cooking. You just use the rack out of your stove, out of your oven. That way you don't need anything special. Now if you have a propane or a butane stove, something like that, with the burners that come off you can actually use that burner and set that burner on something and just put your candles up underneath that instead of using this alright I'm fixing to go this is the emergency DIY emergency uh, stove for those of you that are going without power right now if you need heat watch my last video but this is all candle power no electricity no natural gas no propane candles that's it now adjust the height of these for whatever size candles you have the slower burning the candles the better but once again these are cheap tea light candles you get a hundred pack for four dollars a little bit more maybe and you can cook with them now I'm sorry about the length of the video I'm sorry about moving the camera around um, I hope my voice isn't too loud on it this is for those of you right now in a situation where you don't have a way to cook if you have an oven you have an oven rack. If you don't have clothes pins, find some pieces of wood, some sticks, something to raise that rack up and keep it stable. Anything. And once again, if your candles keep going out, that means it's too close to the rack and when you're putting your pan on, it's pulling the oxygen and suffocating it raise the rack up a little bit more all right i'm fixing to go i hope this video helps somebody out especially right now um that's it 
everyone have a good day and stay safe and try not to freeze and try not to starve. All right, bye.